Welcome to the Moscow United Methodist Church. We hope you enjoy our service. Good morning, church. Good to see you all on this fine and blessed day that we have. What a gorgeous day for Pentecost Sunday and for Confirmation Sunday. That we shall be bringing in eight beautiful new members to our church family. So praise be to God on this special day. As we begin, we look at some parish notes. Um, the Wednesday morning crew is back in action, so they will be here Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Um, there will be no scheduled office hours this week, but if you need anything, please let us know. Let uh, Jenny know. Um, the donation station for the month of May, we continue one more week past this to collect for Griffin Pond Animal Shelter, and you will see the list of items that um, we would appreciate you bring in for our little furry friends. Uh, the food pantry, the most needed items of the week this week are pasta, green beans, pickle relish, and suddenly salad. And for dry goods pantry, um, laundry detergent. The spring sale will return this year, and that will be Saturday, June 5th, from 8 to 1, and drop-off days are the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. If you have any questions, please um, talk to Carol Burnett in the back. Uh, today was the last day for Sunday school, so if you want, please check out the video. Uh, every week a video is um, put out and also a packet for the children to work on. And we thank all of the people that have made Sunday School possible during this challenging year. Um, our Sunday School has grown in this year, so thanks be to God. Um, the prayer network, if you have any prayer requests, please let us know. And if you have any questions about that, Sis Lyon is in charge of that. The learning tree continues to take applications for the 21-22 school year. Um, please check out their website, or on our website, or their Facebook page for more information. 
I will be off starting tomorrow through June 2nd. Um, emergency pastoral calls will be covered by Pastor Eric Luchak, and you have his number. And then uh, next week, Reverend Bob Wood will be leading the worship service. And very important, everyone is invited downstairs for a time of special fellowship to welcome all of our new members into the church immediately following the worship service. Any other announcements? If not, then let us begin to truly worship our God in the only best way possible with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, our one and only almighty God, we gather as your people to worship your holiness and celebrate the glory of the arrival of the promised Holy Spirit that assures us, Lord, of your presence with us always. We rejoice in recalling the birth of the church universal and lift praise to you as we are so blessed to bring new members into our beloved church family. May each and all of us united Worship fully, Lord, and focused on you to bring honor in your sight. In the sacred name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you'll all please rise for the call to worship. Come sing a new song of worship and praise. Pentecost, when power, comfort, hope, and inspiration flowed. When the Holy Spirit was revealed in the place of glory to God's people. The fire of the Holy Spirit continues on through us. Hear the great news of our faith. The Spirit is alive. Praise be to God. Our opening hymn is O Church of Good morning. Good morning. 
Today's reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound with the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in, one, in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Ga- Ga- Galians? And how it is that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phrygia, Pom- Pomphylia, Egypt, and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors of, from Rome, both Jews and Prosiates, Cretans and Arabs, all in their own language as we hear them speak about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying, one, saying to one other, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They were filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the, la- in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon them all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see, shall, shall see dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the, lo- before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls, my name of th- who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God.
So he keeps trying to get out. He has been a phenomenal bishop to us. And we thank him. We love him very much. And um, so today he shares with us his final Pentecost message. And he shall retire at the end of the summer. And they are bringing us two interim bishops from the West Virginia Conference and the West Western Pennsylvania Conference until we can officially um, gain our new bishop. Uh, from the next general conference, which should have been in uh, 2020, but now will be in 2022. So I give to you our Bishop Jeremiah. Happy birthday, church. Today, our church celebrates its most exciting day, its birthday. When the Holy Spirit came upon the followers of Jesus Christ at Pentecost, the church was born, and the world has never been the same. The descriptions of the birth of the church are very vivid with dramatic sight and sound. No wonder. It was a harbinger of a new creation that would change the world. There was a sound like the blowing of a violent wind, and there was a sight of what seems to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of the people gathered. It was truly a miraculous scene of wonder and awe. The miracle didn't stop there. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. People in Jerusalem who came from all over the world were utterly amazed because each one heard them speaking in his or her own language. Thus the church of Jesus Christ was born of the Holy Spirit with a miracle of the tongue. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus' people couldn't contain within themselves the greatest story of God's redemptive love demonstrated by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They began to tell the story with conviction, determination, boldness, and eagerness. That's the church. Whenever or wherever Jesus' people tell the story of Jesus Christ as a compelling love story of God for the world, a church is born. God's people of the Susquehanna Conference, we have a story to tell, a song to sing, a message to give, and a savior to show to the world. For the darkness shall turn to dawning, and the dawning to noonday bright, and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of love and light. So God's people, let's open our mouth and free our tongue to tell the story. There is a power in the story. The story of Jesus and his love is making disciples and transforming the world and will continue to do so until the day of Christ. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love, I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story till be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. The story of Jesus and his love touched your life and my life, and we are no longer the same. That's how a church of Jesus Christ is born. As we celebrate the birthday of the church today, we pray for the miracle of the tongue. Holy Spirit, fall afresh upon us and open our mouth and free our tongues to tell the story of Jesus and his love. However, let's not forget that the other side of the miracle of the tongue is the miracle of the year. One cannot happen without the other. People from all over the world heard what Jesus' people were telling in their own language. The church has to tell the story in the language that people can hear and understand. Our church must learn the language of diverse people, young people, oppressed people, disconnected people, and lost people. The gospel is eternally relevant. However, is the language of the church relevant? 
Do we tell the story of Jesus and his love in a compelling and winsome way that those who hear can understand, relate to, and embrace? Take it or leave it is not the way to tell the greatest story the world has ever heard. It's about God's love story that became flesh and dwelt among us. It's about the amazing grace that saved a wretch like you and me. It's about God who calls and claims each one of us as God's beloved. It's about God's one and only Son who proved God's love for us by dying on the cross while we were yet sinners. It's about a love like that. We have to learn the language of love, the language that those who are lonely in broken places, those who are helpless in despair, those who are lost in darkness, those who are oppressed, those who are imprisoned, and those who are hungry for the bread of life can hear. At the same time, you've got to understand that to learn the language that people can understand, we must learn to listen. People are telling their stories of fear and yearning. They are crying for healing and hope. They are screaming their hurt and pain. God must be speaking through their voices. Are we listening? and really hearing them. So today, we pray for the revival of the miracle of the year. Holy Spirit, fall afresh upon us and open our ears to hear the voice of the people who you so love that you sent your son to prove your love for them. Yet, as we celebrate Pentecost today, we pray for another miracle. It's a miracle of the eyes. On the day of Pentecost, filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter raised his voice and addressed the crowd by quoting the words of the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young people will see visions and your old people will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. The Spirit of the Lord is directly connected to seeing visions and dreaming dreams. Indeed, Pentecost is an eye-opening as well as a mouth-opening and ear-opening event. We are living through one of the most difficult and painful times in modern history. The multi-pandemics of COVID, racism, hate crimes, violence, disparity, divisiveness, and political extremism bring formidable challenges to the church and the world. However, let us remember that there is no waste in God's economy. These crises we are facing cannot be opportunities lost for God and God's people. People inside and outside the church are asking the question, what will church look like in the post-pandemic world? As they are asking, what will the post-pandemic world be like? Those familiar words of Isaiah 43, 19. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Deeply resonate with us as the world is facing a significant threshold moment. Knowing that we simply cannot go back to the way it was before the pandemics, we cannot slip through when God is up to something to make things new. This unprecedented time could be a historic opportunity and the once-in-a-lifetime moment for God's people to dream dreams and see visions of a new church and a transformed world with our eyes wide open. God's words through the prophet Joel connect young people to seeing visions and old people to dreaming dreams with the coming of the Holy Spirit upon them. A couple of points about it. First, it's never too late to have dreams. Dreams keep us alive. No matter how old we may be, we can dream dreams. Second, let our young people lead us. They are the ones who see visions, and their visions will lead the world to a new future. Visions and dreams represent aspirations. However, while dreams may help us stay with aspirations, Visions may invoke within us a forward movement toward the aspired future with focus, clarity, direction, 
and commitment. The Bible says people perish without knowledge. So do the people without vision. Today, many young people are joining the celebration of Pentecost in many of our churches, like uh, Evan Fossey and Trinity Kitch of Trinity Church in Clearfield. Some of them will be confirmed today or in the future. Congratulations to all of you, the new disciples of Jesus Christ of the Susquehanna Conference, who are confirmed today or soon to be confirmed. Please be assured that God pours out God's Spirit upon you as you are conformed as God's beloved. My heart leaps with joy when I encounter our young people who see visions of a new world. They truly believe that they can make this world a better place for all people. They believe that they can make a difference and can change the world. They are the change agents of the kingdom. Evidence of the pouring of the Spirit of God upon them is so clear to me as their vision of the changed world is so fresh, pure, genuine, exciting, imaginative, inspirational, and transformative. Indeed, the Spirit of the Lord is the Spirit of God's vision for a new church and a new world. So young people, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Prophesy. Don't shy away from what the Spirit of the Lord enabled you to see and speak on behalf of God's future for the world. Our world is hungry for the vision of a new world. Believe in the vision of a new world that you see and show and tell and share them as the Spirit inspires and empowers you. They come from the Spirit of the Lord. Why not? 2004 was a pivotal year in my journey. I presented myself as a candidate for Episcopal ministry. For the discernment process, I had to respond to the inquiries like, why do you want to be a bishop? What are the qualities in you that have been identified by others that lead you to believe you are being led to the Episcopal office? What are the five most important qualities for a bishop? And how do you demonstrate them, etc.? One of the questions I had to respond was, what is your vision for the church? This was the response I gave. My vision for the United Methodist Church is that it will become a truly inclusive, diverse, evangelistic, missional, healthy, and growing church for ministry in the world. I envision the United Methodist Church becoming a dynamic place where all persons are accepted and formed as God's children conformed and convicted as disciples for Jesus Christ, and commissioned and sent as ministers and missionaries of the gospel to their communities and beyond. This vision can be described in two words. Beloved community. As I dream dreams of a new church and a new world, I have to ask, how do my visions or dreams of a new church and a new world connect to the visions and dreams that Jesus had? At the core of the visions and dreams that Jesus had was the kingdom of God. So my question is, how do the visions I see and the dreams I dream connect to thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? What will the world look like? When the reign of God is realized as Jesus envisioned it, my answer, beloved community. Let's be reminded that Jesus didn't make any distinction between the church and the world when he told what the kingdom of God was like. The vision, mission, and values of the kingdom apply to all aspects and areas of our lives in the church and in the world. The church we want to be must be in sync with the world we want to live in, where God's love, justice, and peace prevails for all people. That's what the beloved community is about. I dream of a new church and a new world where all people live in harmony and diversity. Embrace one another as brothers and sisters of one family of God. Accept affirm, appreciate, and celebrate the sacred worth of each person 
and respect one another and treat each other with dignity as God's beloved created in the image of God. Jesus' words, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. It's the golden rule of life. As do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God is practiced as the simple rules of life. That's what the beloved community is like. Love God and love others as yourself is the supreme rule of the beloved community and is honored as the greatest commandment. Thus, the new church and the new world we envision and dream is about the new command from Jesus. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. John 13. Indeed, what is eternally new is to love as Jesus loves. The beloved community is about a love like that. From my episcopacy, the vision that keeps my attention and focus is the beloved community. No wonder the Susquehanna Conference has it in its vision statement. Alive in Christ together, Susquehanna Conference will embody the beloved community of disciple-making congregations. Only this year, I had a close online gathering with each district. I had a few things in mind when I wanted to have the meeting. One was to thank our people for their faithfulness in ministry as they continue to extend themselves to serve people with new and creative ways of offering ministries and leadership with determination, courage, and grace. Another one was to hear them as we all struggle with our own anxieties, hurts, frustration, and pains under the circumstances. I also wanted to have a time of prayer together for each other and for the hurting world. However, one particular thing that I had in mind was to share some words of encouragement for one another. I wanted to remind them of the blessed assurance that God is with us, that no one is alone, and that we are in this together. We had a moment of sharing words and scriptures to strengthen one another for the journey. One particular passage that was shared in one of the district meetings deeply resonated with me. It was Ephesians 3.20 in the translation of the message by Eugene Peterson. God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. This passage was summarized in three words. God is able. The story of God's people is full of stories of a God who is able to make a way out of no way. God who is able is with us. God never, ever leaves us nor forsakes us. God who is able has plans for us, plans to prosper us, not harm us, plans to give us hope and a future. God who is able loves us, not because of who we are, but because of who God is. With this able God, we can see visions and dream dreams of the beloved community of God and boldly prophesy. God who is able is in charge. Why not? So today, as we celebrate Pentecost, we pray for the revival of the miracle of the eyes. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us and open our eyes to see visions and dream dreams of a new church and a transformed world and prophesy on behalf of the kingdom of God, the beloved community of Christ. Amen and amen.
seated. I invite now all those who are taking part in confirmation to come forward, the confirmands, their parents, and their sponsors. We have had We have had an interesting journey through confirmation this year, as you can imagine. Um, much of what we did had to be online, and then we finally did get to be in person together for the last two or three 
sessions, and these compromands were excellent. They are amazing people and faithful servants of God. They hung in there, and I just am so thankful and grateful for each and every one of them. So thank you. Okay. Your, your confirmation liturgy will be on the screen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are in, initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith. We renew the covenant declared at our baptism. We acknowledge what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Sponsors? Do you believe in God the Father? I 
your service and your witness. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give you thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love, as members together with you in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the Church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish all of you and strengthen all of you, that you may live in grace and in peace. Amen. Let me give you your Bibles before you depart. As we come to a time of prayer in the family of faith, let us begin with any concerns. Do we have any concerns to lift up today? Any concerns? Oh, I'm sorry, sis. Okay, Wayne Smith. And 
Oh. Okay. So we add Wayne, John, Lynn, and Dan. Any others to add? Any other concerns? And of course, we continue to pray for the pandemic and our denomination, our church, our country, our leaders, the schools, it's almost over, kids. Um, for Maurice, for Frank Sierra Sr., for uh, the Kashmir family, for unspoken requests, and for those who suffer in silence, for there are many. Let them be brought to God's love through us. How about joys? Joys of confirmation and new members and the growing kingdom of God among us. And for the Sunday school, for our message from Bishop Park, um, and I heard from uh, Frank and Bonnie Sierra. They would like to share their joy that um, Amanda graduated from Penn State University. So congratulations to them. Anyone else? Yes, Sarah. Um, I just want to say thank you for the prayers. I'm so glad to be back in church. Um, I was in the hospital a couple weeks ago, and some kind of anyway. was so I'm going to be an ongoing thing that I'm going to have to take medicine for. Hard. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> Anyone else? Anything else? Barbara? Thank you very much for you and your crew and all that you do. Anyone else? If not, then let us begin in silent prayer. Pray from your heart to the God who loves you. Let us pray. Lord, our God, Hear our prayers. We lift our cares, our concerns, and our joys to you in faith. Assured, Lord, confident that you shall answer. Thank you and praise you, Lord, for this blessed day of celebration and promises fulfilled through the spirit of Pentecost and for the hope in your growing kingdom on earth, in the lives of these new members joining the church family. Lord, answering your call upon their lives of love and peace to serve you, along with your church universal, in continuing to carry forth the mission of Jesus. Draw us all, Lord, closer into communion with you, that we shall accomplish your will, shining your grace into our community and beyond. Lead us by your wisdom, your discernment, Lord, throughout all of our lives. Lord, we lift up much in our hearts to you this day. Especially, Lord, we lift up to you all those suffering through the pandemic. We lift up our church, our country, and leaders, our schools. We lift up to you unspoken requests. And those who are suffering in silence, let them know your grace, Lord. We lift up Maurice, Frank, the Kashmir family, Lord, we lift up to you Dan, Wayne, John, and Carol, Lynn, Lord, and we just ask, Lord, that they know your healing touch, that you do bring them guidance and peace and comfort and hope in their times of trial. And Lord, we ask a special blessing upon all of our confirmands, upon the Bibles that they have been given that they would always remember you and use them much. And Lord, we ask you to bless the banner that they have made that shall hang here in their church. Lord, we know that your love is always shining through them and through all they do. And Lord, our list of joys are the 
Sunday School, and all that made so much possible this year. We thank you for our message from Bishop Park. We thank you and praise you for Amanda graduating from Penn State University, and to Frank and Bonnie, a great job done. And Lord, we thank you and praise you that Sarah has come through and is back here where she belongs with us. And Lord, we continue now to pray the words that Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise be to our God that we have an abundance from which we extend our dutiful tithes and offerings to the church. All of our contributions, each of our contributions, make it possible for us to be the church, visible and active in carrying out through ministry and mission. That was indeed originated by Jesus. We carry that on through our giving. It is in giving that we realize how blessed we truly are, for in giving we receive. Thank you for all your faithful gifts during this time, this extended time of the pandemic. We appreciate those. And for everyone who is here in the church building, please, you may drop your tithes and offerings in the plates on the way out in the back of the sanctuary. And for our church joining us from near and far, wherever they are. Please mail your tithes and offerings in to the church, or um, you can do it through EFT or by PayPal. Prayers to each and all for the week ahead, that you will stand firm in your faith and walk in the light of God's word as you remain faithfully, joyfully obedient to the commands to love God, and to love your neighbor as yourself. The Spirit is ever present, providing for all of our needs. Trust and have faith. Have a blessed journey with Jesus. Praise be to our God. Our closing hymn today for Pentecost is...
awesome people. Receive the Holy Spirit. Ashley, give us a few more bars, would you please? <laughs>